Hello and welcome to my astrology channel. My name is Martine and if you are new here, I do videos on Vedic astrology mainly, but also use tropical insights. Um, and I focus on both synastry and uh, natal chart interpretations. So if you like this video and you would like to hear more content from me, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and uh, the notifications bell to see when I will post the next video. And also, if you're interested in a personal consultation, please email me at the email address that you will find in the video description. Thank you. And today I'm going to be talking about a aspect that has been basically decided by a topic that was decided by popular request because there have been, I think, a lot of requests um, about me to do the video on this aspect, namely Venus conjunct Moon. Now, I have decided to do two separate videos, so I'm going to talk about Venus conjunct Trine and Sextile in this video because this is mainly the the positive aspects that you will find between Venus and Moon in Sinistry. And then I'll, I'm going to make a, another video at some point for the square and opposition. Otherwise, it's going to last for like hundreds of years. So I need to cut it short. So let me get straight into it. So what is Venus in a person's chart? Venus is the value system. It is the way that you show your affection. It is the female side of your psyche, the anima, what Jung called the anima. Uh, so both women and men have it, but for a man it represents the the kind of woman that he will be attracted to, and for a woman it represents how she sees herself and how she relates to herself as a woman. And it also points to a lot of things, like what she needs to be fulfilled as a woman and what makes her happy and the kind of things that are going to bring her joy and make her flourish as a woman. And it also represents your relationship to money, finances, the things that you value because Venus is the natural ruler of Taurus, which is the natural significator of the second house, the house of acquired possessions. And the, basically the verb for Taurus is I possess or I have. Um, and uh, so Venus represents your relationship to money, to wealth. I mean, it's one of the planets that show your relationship to money and wealth. It's not the only one, but it's one of the most important ones. So it shows your attitude towards money, whether you're frugal, whether you like to lavish presence on others and not care about money too much. Um, it shows your uh, your attitude towards material possessions, like I said. Um, it also shows what you enjoy, your hedonistic side, uh, what you find pleasurable, both in actually physical, from a physical point of view, but also when it comes to your hobbies, your interests, the things that you do for fun. And, but most importantly, in a relationship, Venus represents the way that you show your affection, um, your style of expressing your love, the kind of love that you want in a relationship. And the moon represents your emotional needs. The moon is like, and I've mentioned this before, I think, um, is your inner baby. So it's like the most vulnerable, helpless, emotionally needy side of yourself. And I have mentioned this, I think, in the Mars-Moon sinistry aspects, that uh, the moon, you know, if it is under attack by somebody else's planets, you tend to become defensive around that person. And that is basically what is not going to happen with this aspect. And this is why this aspect, namely Venus conjunct Moon, and to a lesser extent, uh, Venus trine and sextile moon, these are aspects that really will point to a long-term relationship because if for no other reason, simply because of the fact that in this relationship, the moon person especially, but both people will feel really safe with each other. So they will feel 
like you have you will feel like if you are in a relationship where you have this sinistry aspect you will feel safe you will feel contained in this relationship so the venus person is going to feel loved and pampered by the moon person um they're going to feel the venus person is going to feel like they can lavish their affection on the moon person uh without containing themselves because they're going to be accepted and it is really a very tender affectionate kind of energy unlike the typical passionate relationship aspects like venus mars mars moon sun venus um you know any of this male to female planet relationships where there is indeed like let's say passion and tingles and butterflies in your stomach and all this stuff with this aspect you simply have pure love pure affection in a sense it's almost like the kind of the pure love that you will find between a mother and her daughter like which sounds really weird when you put it in a relationship context <laughs> but kind of think of it that way so it's like there is this you know the moon person will feel protective of the venus person um you know they will feel the need to nurture the venus person and in in return venus will continue to lavish love so it's kind of like this um it's like the opposite of a vicious circle you know it's like it's a positive circle it's like where the venus the more the venus person shows their affection the more the moon person will feel safe and they will continue to nurture the venus person so each person in this relationship especially with the conjunction will feel like they are really getting their emotional needs met and they're going to feel safe and they're just going to feel like they have a home with this person um yeah <laughs> that's pretty much it so with the conjunction this is what you're going to get um it makes so basically another thing kind of going hand in hand with the idea of safety and all that it really just if a person let's say if especially if you're dealing with a person who has a really damaged moon like that moon is aspected in their natal chart is aspected by mars it, maybe it's in scorpio it's debilitated um it's aspected by saturn even the sun actually any any of the harsh planets um and then somebody comes along and has their venus conjunct this moon it's like putting some you know aloe vera on the wound <laughs> like it's a soothing energy and this moon person will really appreciate it and now see this is kind of like again this is where i'm going to get into you have to look at individual charts because on the other hand what could happen is if you have a a, a moon person who doesn't have a challenged moon like like maybe the moon is you know maybe the moon itself is conjunct venus in the natal chart which means that this moon is really comfortable and likes sugar spice and everything nice and everything is easy breezy most likely they haven't had any kind of harsh uh brushes with reality in this life and that person if they meet somebody whose venus is conjunct their moon they they might not appreciate it as much they're going to see this person as boring maybe because <laughs> it's going to be very familiar energy depends you know but this is one interpretation this is one this is one way in which the relationship can play out so yeah i mean the bottom line is that this aspect to me it just shows pure sweetness it shows a comfortable atmosphere affection um building a home together again this is kind of like a, a, this is one of those aspects where you will feel the need to build a nest like to have your little you know your little like nest away from the the rest of the world where you create little pretty things and you make a comfortable home together and you decorate it in a nice way um that is you know a kind of home that is just a haven away from the rest of the world um and you are definitely going to have a tendency to have a beautiful home if you have this especially the conjunction uh because there will be venus is also beauty so and moon is home so when these two archetypes come together in a relationship there will be a need to create a beautiful home um among other things it also can show things like increased interest in 
uh, arts together, or cultural activities together, um, cooking, uh, bubble baths, everything that has to do with just, again, just creating the soft, like, warm, comfortable environment and a sense of home. But most importantly, what you will get in this relationship is the feeling that the other person is your home or, like, part of your home. So there is that scent. This is a very, really strong glue in a relationship. Of course, you have to look at the whole chart. And again, you have to look at, you know, people will love to emphasize, for instance, that you need to have a lot of Saturn aspects in Sinistry. But that is not necessarily always the case. Um, Saturn shows a sense of responsibility. Um, and it can sometimes play out in a negative sense. But I won't get into that. But this is one of those uh, aspects that creates a natural glue where two people will be drawn to each other because they have what the other person needs and they form a very tight symbiotic kind of connection where each person gets something really valuable from the other one in the relationship. So it's going to become difficult to give it up if there will be challenges or you know, anything external impacts the relationship in a negative way. So, yeah, pretty much this is what I have to say. So it's like a very, very pure romantic love. Um, and like I said, Venus finances, moon emotional needs. So, the again, oh, and another thing, of course, because Venus is finances and, and moon is the home and emotional needs and all that, there will be a tendency to increase your financial well-being if you have this in sinistry uh, at the very least and can show that you will preserve your resources meaning it will be easier for you to save money together so yeah pretty much so this is my basic interpretation and now i have prepared a few examples as usual um so actually again before i go into the few examples so what is the difference between venus conjunct moon obviously venus conjunct moon this is the strongest aspect but the trine and sextile are also helpful um the trine is normally the trine and sextile don't exist from the vedic perspective because in vedic astrology the only two aspects that either the venus or either venus or moon can make are conjunction and opposition um but since i have also studied tropical astrology i definitely think that this is one aspect where it is worth checking if you have the trine or the sextile um, and also, even if you don't want to name them as aspects, maybe it doesn't really matter if you name them as aspects, to be honest. What matters is how these energies interact. And when you think about it, it does matter if it is a trine or a sextile. Uh, remember, I have explained this before. I don't remember in what video. Um, but the trine basically means that you share the same element, but not the same modality. So, for instance, uh, you know, Aries is trine Sagittarius. Aries is cardinal fire and Sagittarius is mutable fire. So they will have the same element but different modalities. A sextile is between two planets that have the same polarity, meaning they're either both feminine or both masculine. So uh, Venus in Virgo, for instance, is sextile moon in Cancer. Um... Yeah, except for the one that, uh, the sign of opposition. So uh, Venus in Virgo is going to be opposite Moon in Pisces. So the other two signs that come from the complementary element of water, in this case, for Venus in Virgo. So the other two signs that are not the opposition, those are the sextile. So they are... In the trine, it's more powerful because you have the same polarity and the same element. Uh, the same polarity meaning both signs are either going to be masculine or feminine. So Venus in Aries, trine, uh, Venus in Sagittarius, both signs are masculine 
and they are fire. So they share the polarity and they share the element. Uh, when you have sextile, the two planets will only share the polarity. So Venus in Cancer uh, or Venus in Virgo and Moon in Cancer, for instance. They share the same polarity. They're both feminine signs, uh, but one of them is uh, water, the other one is Earth. And so the trine is always going to be stronger than the sextile. The sextile in the traditional interpretations of tropical astrology was seen as, quote, the opportunity of something to develop. So the sextile is kind of, the sextile is a kind of energy that just doesn't get in the way of something happening. So it's kind of like on the verge between being a helpful aspect and uh, being <laughs> a, a bad aspect. So it's, it's really in the middle, so it doesn't get in the way between a relationship forming. It, it shows the opportunity for something to develop there if there is some effort made on both sides. Uh, with the trine, it will be a kind of a natural flow of energy. Um, there will be a, a natural sense of compatibility, but it won't be as strong and as powerful. And it won't be as strong and as, as I guess... Um, how should I put it, intense, well, that is strong, basically, as the conjunction, because the conjunction is, you know, the same sign, so uh, you identify, so the two parts of your psyche, so in your case, if you're the Venus, and the other person is the Moon, uh, you will feel like your uh, affectionate nature will identify with the other person's mind, and their emotions, and their emotional needs, so there will be a very strong sense of identification with the other person, which doesn't exist in the trine. Maybe this, uh, this was like overcomplicating, but this is the way that I see it. Um, and so when you have the trine, it's definitely a helpful aspect to have, and also the sextile. But, you know, bear in mind how I explained it. So the trine is definitely the stronger of these two. Uh, and I have noticed in the examples you will see, and I, I've also noticed in a lot of charts that I have read uh, throughout my existence, that these relationships that have positive Moon-Venus aspects are definitely long-lasting. Um, positive meaning, again, conjunction, trine, sextile. I won't get into like things like quintile or semi-sextile. I mean, those are just... I don't think they're necessary. Um, like one, if you have to check for like quintiles and semi-sextiles, chances are <laughs> it's, it, it is, it is not, uh, you know, it, it is not an ideal relationship. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, examples. Okay. First example of famous couple, Yoko Ono and John Lennon. Yoko Ono had Venus in Capricorn. John Lennon had Moon in Capricorn. They had the conjunction. This was a very long-term relationship. It basically ended when John Lennon was killed. Um, yeah. Um, so I haven't looked, obviously I haven't looked at the whole sinistry interaction, but just having these strong, just having this conjunction will show you that it is definitely conducing to long-term relationships. Um, and second example, George Clooney and Amal Clooney. So George Clooney has moon conjunct Saturn in Capricorn, and Amal Clooney has Sun conjunct Venus in Capricorn. So in their case, not only do they have Moon-Venus conjunction, but they also have Saturn and Sun involved. So this is definitely long-term serious relationship. Um, her Saturn, sorry, her Sun and his Saturn are also involved. And also, they also have the the trine, because his Venus is in Pisces and her Moon is in Scorpio. They also have the trine between Venus and Moon. Another example, Joanne Woodward and Paul Newman. Again, I have used this example countless times. I think these two have probably had every positive sinistry aspect in the history of astrology, um, because they're also used in a lot of sites as a famous couple a famous long-lasting couple uh, in astrology. So, yeah, so Joanne Woodward, she has Moon-Venus conjunct in Aquarius. Paul Newman has had uh, Moon conjunct Moon in Aquarius, yeah. So, 
her moon Venus conjunction is conjunct his moon. Again, in her in this case, it's even stronger than just a regular Venus moon conjunction because her moon is also involved. So they also have the moon moon conjunction. Another aspect that was requested and at some point I will get to talking about it. Um and also they again have the sextile. Her moon venus conjunction in aquarius is sextile his venus in sagittarius very nice so like when you have this like mutual thing where both people have so you have like uh let's say your venus is conjunct the other person's moon and the other person's venus is trine or sextile your moon um this is obviously even that more strong and that stronger in creating a affectionate bond between two people like this really strong emotional glue of you know feeling contained and safe and all that stuff so definitely strong for a long-term relationship uh and here kind of a counter example i wrote angelina jolie and brad pitt uh, so brad pitt has moon conjunct venus in sagittarius this is his natal chart Angelina Jolie has Moon in Pisces, Venus in Cancer. So what they have is a square. So her Moon in Pisces is square his Moon and Venus conjunct in Sagittarius. This relationship, needless to say, did not last. Of course, it was still long term, but sadly it didn't last. Now whether it was, obviously I think, and I have mentioned them several times before it's probably not the only reason why the relationship didn't last but my guess is that with the square and you can kind of feel it there like you could kind of feel it looking at their relationship that there was probably not the deepest emotional affinity there and like I don't want to sound shallow or something but maybe that was just that's the way that I saw it um but yeah that's basically what it means so like when again I I said that I would I said that I would talk about the square and the opposition in depth in another video, so that's what I'm going to do. For now, all I'm going to say is that they didn't have the positive aspects, so the relationship didn't last. Um, and just for fun, I checked Jennifer Aniston's chart as well, because why not? Um, and her moon is in Scorpio, her Venus is in Pisces. Again, her, her Venus in Pisces, so unlike Angelina Jolie, who has moon in Pisces, Jennifer Aniston has Venus in Pisces, uh, which is square Brad, Brad Pitt's moon Venus Sag in Sagittarius. Another square, and they're, they don't have the, they don't have any sex style, they don't have any positive moon, moon Venus aspects. I'm just saying, don't be too fatalistic about these, but so far, things are not looking good for relationships that don't have positive Venus moon aspects. Um, Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. This one is interesting because this is something that I would expect, you know, um, I would expect about Moon Venus opposition. Uh, so Moon Venus opposition, this is what they have. So Hillary Clinton, her moon is in Aquarius, her Venus is in Libra. Bill Clinton, his moon is in, in uh, Aries. His Venus is in Virgo. So he has his moon opposite Hillary's Venus in Libra. Um, and what I wanted to say, this is all I'm going to say, and I'm going to talk about any details about the hard aspect in another video. But what I wanted to say is that my my take on this generally would be that the opposition is strong enough to hold a couple together. Uh, because it's a it's a give and take kind of interaction, whereas the square is more of a friction. That's it. That's all I had to say. Um, next couple example, Vivian Lee, Moon in Capricorn, Venus in Virgo, Laurence Olivier, Moon in Leo, Venus in Aries. See, this couple again, they only had the square. Her Moon in Capricorn square, his Venus in Aries. Again, I have mentioned their relationship countless times. They also had the Venus-Mars square, but I forgot which one of them was the, the Mars and which was the Venus. Um, in, in any case... Basically, you can kind of see the pattern here that, you know, without the Moon-Venus things, there is no strong, the Moon-Venus aspect, there is no strong, like, emotional affinity for a particular relationship. That's pretty much the, that's pretty much the general feel uh, that I get, anyway, intuitively. 
And、um, last but not least, Emmanuel Macron and his wife Brigitte. So he has Moon in Aries, Venus in Scorpio. She has Moon conjunct Venus in Pisces. And also has Sun thrown in there. So she has Moon conjunct Venus conjunct Sun in Pisces. And so his Venus trines her Moon, Venus, and Sun multiple conjunction. See, again, in, in this relationship, very long lasting, very long lasting relationship. I mean, they were together since he was basically underage. d But let's not dwell on that.、Um, <laughs> I mean, but he has his Venus trine. Her moon Venus conjunction and,、uh, and her sun as well being thrown in there would only make it stronger because now Venus is throwing affection not just on the moon Venus planet but also on sun, her life path. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That is, that is all I have for now. Maybe at some point I will. I will Make new videos if I find out new information, but for now, this is it. And of course, I will be making another video at some point, hopefully in the next two weeks,、um, about Moon Square and opposite Venus. So that was it. Thank you for listening. And once again, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell. And if you're interested in a personal consultation, please email me at the email. That I will leave in the video description. So, thank you.